Hey guys, this is Jess from Stellar Tarot, <clears throat> and today I would like to talk to you a little bit about um, edging tarot decks. Um, kind of the tips and tricks for my trial and errors over the last, uh, I've been doing this for about a year now, so yeah, about the last year. Um, I have with me a selection of decks. Um, I don't have with me here all the decks that I've ever edged. Um, I just have a few to kind of give you the gist of um, what you should be doing with it. So um, the first thing that I'm going to uh, talk to you about is um, quality of ink. <laughs> um, I do not personally use Sharpies or markers to um, edge my tarot decks. Um, I did try that route uh, sorry, no, I did not try that route um, because I heard a lot of people say um, from their experience that it just wasn't working well. You'd get a lot of transfer onto the actual cards and things like that. So I did not and I do not um, use uh, markers or Sharpies to edge my decks. I only use ink pads. Um, however, the first time I tried to edge my decks, I bought ink pads from the local dollar store but it wasn't one of those typical dollar stores where everything is like one or two dollars this one had a lot of more higher end expensive things in it and actually their craft section is pretty good um, and I, I bought a couple of ink pads that they weren't cheap but they weren't expensive like brand name ones either and I just didn't get the ink retention on the cards that I was hoping for. Um, and so I did end up buying new ink pads quite recently. So um, I will share with you the two brands that I have used that have been really good. Um, the first one is probably one that a lot of you guys are familiar with and that is the Distress Ink brands. Um, I bought a four pack um, on Amazon and so these actually stack together. So I have Iced Spruce I have Bundled Sage, I love the name of this one, Tattered Rose, which I have not used, and Squeezed Lemonade, which again I haven't used. I bought this particular set um, for the two greens here. Um, so bundled, uh, these are what the ink pads look like. It's quite a solid um, ink pad, it's quite dense. Um, and it doesn't break apart. There's a top layer on this, it's hard to see, but there's a top woven layer on this that's not really a sponge, and it's really good for transferring the ink onto um, the edge of tarot cards. The um, other brand that I have used and had a lot of success with are these also stackable, um, Fast Drying Dew Drop uh, Brilliance inks um, and they do have a sponge type applicator pad um, but the the colors are really true to what you see on the pad whereas I don't find that with the distress ink so with the distress ink you get quite a dark looking pad um, but when the actual ink goes on a piece of paper it's just not, um, the color isn't quite as true looking as the dew drops are. So just be aware of that. Um, I did also purchase uh, this Color Box brand, and this is a proper stink, uh, ink pad size, um, also with the sponge applicator, to use on my um, Animal Spirit from the Wild Unknown deck and my um, Tarot of the Hidden Realms. Um, it looks beautiful on the side. It's a little bit subtle, but you can see. But I don't know if you can see this. I am getting some ink transfer. I don't know if it's showing up or not, but I am getting a little bit of ink transfer onto my hands. Definitely from Tarot of the Hidden Realms. Um, it doesn't look too bad for ink transfer on the inside of my bag, which is pretty good. Um, <clears throat> and let me just check the Wild Unknown and see if we're getting much ink transfer off of it. 
yeah, when you rub it, I get a little bit of ink transfer. Again, I don't know how well that will show up. Oh, there you go, you can kind of see it. So, um, very different card stocks on those two particular decks, so it's not just um, a card stock thing. Um, it is that particular ink. Um, so I wouldn't recommend that particular brand, at least not for the silver. Um, I'm not mining so much that some of the ink is coming off. I, I can deal with that. Um, but I am going to attempt to purchase um, probably the Dewdrop uh, Brilliance ink in the silver at some point so that um, I can redo those two decks later on. So just be aware of that. Um, a note on why you might choose to edge a deck. Um, and that is purely for aesthetic purposes. Um, some people cannot understand why anyone would want to take the time and the effort to edge a deck. Um, I, on the other hand, feel that it really adds some character and some, um, some charm to the deck. And I think my two favorites that I have edged thus far have been the uh, Sherlock Holmes Tarot which um, I think I've mentioned before, but I'll tell you again. Um, I traded, uh, I got this deck in a trade with my best friend, um, Brie, from Nim's Divination, and she got my Modern Spellcasters Tarot, and I got the Sherlock Holmes Tarot. Um, she's not very familiar with the Sherlock Holmes uh, stories and a lot of the characters and things like that, whereas I absolutely adore Sherlock Holmes, and I have read all of them. Um, but she really uh, clicked in with the imagery on the Modern Spellcasters Tarot, whereas I was kind of like, yeah, it's nice, but so were a lot of the other decks that I work with. Um, so the Sherlock Holmes Tarot, I did uh, trim. It did have um, a white border around it when I began, um, and now it is trimmed, and I love it. It's perfect. It's just the right size for shuffling, and now the images really pop. Um, I also edged this deck in gold, which you can tell from looking at this color here on the back was a wise choice. Um, what you may not be able to tell from this video is that it matches pretty much perfectly. So I was very happy with this. Um, so yeah, why some people choose to edge decks is purely for aesthetic purposes. Um, when you're holding the deck in your hand and you have this back that's visible and then you have a side that matches it really well it feels to me like it just looks more cohesive um, it's not to say that there's anything wrong with decks that have white cut sides on them there isn't there's nothing wrong with it at all um, I just happen to be um, of the person who likes to have um, some of her decks edged so when I'm edging a deck, my process is pretty much the same. I hold the ink pad in my left hand, and I like to have the card facing towards me in my right. That way I can look at the image as I'm edging. And I always start the same way. I have the title, or at least the card, upright in my hand. I edge the corner along the bottom, get the corner again, up and down on the sides, corner, top, side, and then a little bit again. I do each card individually and I lay them out to dry. And I usually leave my cards lying there for at least a half an hour. Even though all my inks have said that they are fast drying and that they don't need a lot of time to dry, I do like to give them a good chance because some cards are a little bit more um, treated with the, uh, the um, edges than um, others and so I like to have um, a long time for the ink to absorb. Also, um, it may not be visible on the video but some decks, like the Llewellyn card stock, you may see there's a little bit of white along the sides here. Some decks are a little bit more porous and absorbent with the ink than others, and so they need at least a couple of passes. So my Mystic Fairy is going to get another pass across the ink pad again today. Um, so that's how I pretty much edge all my decks, is the same 
technique. Um, and I'll just show you a couple of the other decks that I have edged. Um, this one again is going to get another pass, um, but for now this is one pass with green. Um, this is the Iced Spruce specifically from Distress Ink on my uh, Green Witch Tarot. So it does look nice and it does seem to match the deck rather well, but I would like it to be just a titch darker. Um, and uh, yeah, I th I'm debating whether or not I'm going to do a pass with the Bundled Sage first and then iced spruce over top. So we'll see. Um, I do like to try to um, match the cards as well as I can, um, but if it can't be matched exactly, then I'm not opposed to it being a little bit different. I, I like to complement the cards or match closely is what I usually prefer to do. Um, another deck that I edged was the Zombie Tarot. This one was just begging to be edged in black as probably a lot of you can guess. This was also with the Dewdrops Brilliant and it did so well. So the, the, the backs were black, the edges are now black, and on a couple of the cards it even bled just a little bit onto the edge and I don't even mind because these cards already look a little bit distressed anyway, so I was totally okay with that. Um, the other thing I do sometimes is once I finish edging a whole deck and it's dried, sometimes I'll get it together as a collective like this and then pass the ink pad over top and kind of dab it in places where it might look a little paler just as a collection, as a deck together. Um, and that's another thing that you can do as well. Don't have to. But as I said, I, I leave my cards to dry for at least a good half an hour, sometimes even longer before I pick them up. I like to have a good chance for the ink to absorb. The last deck I'd like to show you is my first edition um, Wild Unknown Tarot. And I chose to do black for this one as well because the backs are this. Woo! The backs are this nice diamond shape of lines, and when you have the black on the side, it seems to complement it really well. Um, it also complements it really well when you look at, if you just have a card like this on the top, and then you see the black around the edges. Um, it seems to frame it really nicely, and uh, I just think it, it does something for the deck. Um, I I did use that silver on my Wild Unknown um, Animal Spirit, um, which is a little bit different cardstock than the Wild Unknown First Edition. Um, actually, it might be the same. And you know what? It's probably the same very very similar if it isn't the same um, so I don't know how the new versions the mass-produced versions of the wild unknown would do um, so <coughs> that is something that you would have to kind of um, uh, figure out for yourself um, but yeah I, I really enjoy the way that my decks look um, when they are edged at least some of them um, I have done um, a round deck as well. I did gold around my Mother Peace Tarot and I did gold around my Goddess Tarot by uh, Chris Walder. So um, yeah, it can really be, or is it Kim Walder? I can never remember. Um, I really enjoy the way that my decks looked edged. So I'm definitely recommending that you give it a go. Um, if it's your first deck and you're nervous about it, I recommend going with the mass produced, rather inexpensive deck first. That way, if you make any big mistakes, you can always repurchase the deck pretty um, easily and readily. I saved my um, two indie decks pretty much for last, um, and I was extremely careful when I was doing them, so um, I, I kind of 
broke myself in with the cheaper decks first. If you have any other questions about how to edge or which decks would make um, good choices maybe among my collection or things like that, please leave them below. I'll do my best to answer them. And um, yeah, I would love for you to uh, maybe tag me in Instagram posts if you choose to edge deck yourself. Um, show me some pictures I would love to see. Uh, you can find my Instagram handle down below and I encourage you to follow me and um, you know kind of tag me or in the comments or in the photo itself and, and show me your edged tarot decks. We'll talk to you later guys.